All right, guys, it is time. We're going to be doing a pantry tour. Now that doesn't mean we're done the pantry challenge. We are still kind of following some rules for that in February, so stay tuned. We'll maybe talk about that a little bit at the end of the video, but for the most part, we're gonna keep going with the pantry challenge until we run out of food. That's the idea, right? But as you saw previously in our earlier pantry tour, the shelves were pretty stacked. They were pretty full. And it is amazing how much we have managed to consume in 30 well now i guess it's 33 days but in the month of january and we're going to show you that as an example with all the empty jars here shortly but first let's take a look at these shelves and see the parts that are missing now so one thing you're seeing here is we're sitting at the homemade pantry or all items that we basically canned ourselves here on the homestead is the ready meals have depleted now when we did this tour in january at the beginning before we started the pantry challenge these shelves were already running a bit low. I think I even mentioned that I needed to get making some stuff out of the freezer in order to start filling these shelves again. Well, we have done that, but we've kind of left it off the shelf so that you could actually see what we have consumed in 30 days. And the ready meals, they went fast. Things like soups, stews. You can see right beside me here, this is our summer's best soup and our lamb stew section. I have one jar and three jars. But have no fear, I have more to put back because you saw us make some of this over the January challenge. Things that kind of didn't disappear as much as I thought they would, the jams and jellies, the beans, that sort of thing. Even the August stews this year with not eating as much pasta, I have found that they're lasting a lot longer than originally they would have. So that's something that I'm impressed with the staying power of what we've managed to can. I believe we did 58 jars of August stew this year. And as you can see down here on the bottom, we still have 24 jars that still can come up to the top shelf. So we're less than halfway through what we put away for the August stew and we're into February. So I'm feeling pretty positive about that. So as you can see here, there's the two boxes still remaining of the August stew. Above that is pizza sauce. But as we scan over here, really all of this is tomato juice still. We really aren't going through the tomato juice, although I will admit I used quite a bit in some of the soups and stews that I have made. So this is going to be a focus as we get going here into the summer season is getting through some of this tomato juice. So as you can see, these are still 2021 we haven't even got into using 2022s yet, and I didn't really can very much for 2023. This is a good time to take one of the yellow ones upstairs. Also 2021. So on this end of the uh, canning shelves, we really haven't gone through a lot. Applesauce, which is something I really wanted to eat more of, we just haven't. I don't know why, I can't explain it. We have so many apples on the property and we make so much apple product and we really aren't consuming it. So hopefully we can improve that as well moving forward to the next growing season. But here is an area that I had the tomato juice that I have been using for some of the soups and stews and things like that. Another thing that we have used quite a bit of is our curry sauces because we've been eating a lot of curry, which we always do and we knew we would. So I did can up about 50 jars of that this year. And as you saw in January, I already canned up some more. So we'll be able to replenish this no problem at all. So one thing that did run out during January was our chicken barley soup and you saw us, we made turkey barley soup with leftover turkey at the very beginning of the month. And we've already put that on the shelf and we've already almost consumed it all. So that's another one that we got to make more of. But I wanted to state that even though it looks like this is still very plentiful, it's already what we canned up in January being used. As you remember, the bottom here was all overstock, which I usually take jars from and put them on top. It makes me think of that. You take a block from the, you know, every time I think about it, I think of the Jenga song. We need to now take the extra jars from here and move them to the top in order to make space for the new stuff that I canned over January and also to see where our shortfalls are. But before we do that, I'm going to show you just how many jars we consumed in January. So here we go. In one month of the pantry challenge, we used 58 jars of canned food. Now, the one thing I will say is two of those jars were honey and jam that we bought from Ikea. So they don't quite count in what we put away, but it was still a jar that was consumed over the month. So 58 jars is almost two a day, which is pretty impressive. 
So as many of you know, especially if you've followed along on Hickory Croft Farm, Chris and I are trackers. We love following the numbers and making sure that what we're doing makes sense. And this year, I thought, let's take it to the next level. Not only count what we brought in, but let's count what we use. So I kept track in my book all January, everything I took out of the pantry. Now, not only did I track what we did that was our own food that we put away, but I also tracked the things that we took out of the store-bought pantry. Now, I'm not going to touch on that too much in this video. That might come in a future video video but for now I'm just talking about the stuff that we've put away and these jars were all different sizes some were small jams and jellies some were hot sauces some were big stews things like that but it really does put it into perspective how many jars you'll go through in a season and the one thing I will say is we ate a lot out of the freezer it wasn't even all out of the pantry I think if we had just been eating out of the pantry it would have been at least double this so I, I really, it has been fantastic and just such an eye opener, really going through the numbers in that sense for us and getting a better feel for how much we're actually consuming. So as we're over here in the store-bought pantry area, the one thing I wanted to touch on was that we did buy one item in particular over the January challenge. We didn't buy any other stuff for the pantry, but we did purchase six jars of maple syrup. These were on sale for seven bucks. Seven bucks is a really great price and it was too good to pass up. To be honest, we even went back to the store to get more the next day, but they were all gone. So it was a definitely be there the first day of the sale. And the other thing that we did purchase as well was 12 blocks of butter because they were on for $4.88 and that price really is a good deal right now. And that gave us a whole year's supply of butter. So those are things I didn't quite mention in other videos, but we did restock on those two items. The other thing I want to touch on quickly was our squash and our potatoes. The potatoes, we really probably went through about a box, maybe even a box and a half between canning and eating. I'm showing you the main ones here are russets and the all blue potatoes. Those are the ones we really put a dent in, but there's still four more boxes to go. So when it comes to squash, we still have no shortage. And to be honest, it is keeping quite well. We do have a few that you can see here are starting to go wrinkly and soft, but we're basically consuming them as we need to. When something looks like it's going, it's gone. So we have 20 left of these and we have four of our big guys still left. These pizza sauce are all still 2022. I don't know why we made more pizza sauce for 2023, to be honest, but we're definitely not going to need to grow as many tomatoes for the 2024 season because I have a lot of pizza sauce, a lot of pasta sauce, and a lot of tomato juice. This gets a few jars moved up, a little bit of chicken broth restocking. I don't need to make any more of that anytime soon. Although we do have more in the freezer to be I made. know, and I have a lot more of that. I do need more Polly's Moroccan stew made. So one thing that we have found ourselves using a lot of this year is our homemade syrups, our fruit syrups, cherry, apple, raspberry, blueberry, because we've been eating a lot of smoothies now that we're making our own yogurt. And that's something that I'm so glad I had a box down underneath to replenish because as you can see, we were running out of some raspberry and some of the other syrup. So let's get that stuff back up. All right, so we've taken everything from the bottom and we put it on top and then <laughs> every time, honestly. But anyways, we've taken everything from the bottom that we could find spots for up top. And now we're gonna go get the stuff that we have canned already this year and kind of fill in any spots and store that. But as you can see, there's still some blank spots, even with what we had moved from the uh, bottom to the top. <laughs> you just saw this freezer filled with all those empty jars that we had consumed, but this is what we managed to produce over the month of January. So it's pretty impressive, isn't it? How much we've managed to produce in January while consuming, while on a pantry challenge. But that is something that you really need to think about when you are growing 75% of your food is that you have to produce just as much as you consume. And sometimes that means canning all year long, using what you got in the freezer, using what's in the pantry and repurposing. There are so many ways to keep producing food over the non-growing season, especially for us up north where the non-growing season is pretty long. But some of the things I'm just gonna touch on that we uh, did produce this year, you saw us a lot of broth, lamb broth, chicken broth, lots of lamb broth, and lamb meat we canned up some of that 
One of the things that I think is kind of new that we've done this year is we canned some cranberry juice. This actually was a lucky thing. Chris managed to get a good deal at the store on some fresh cranberries. Never done this before. So we'll let you know how it turns out in like, is it four weeks or four months? You have to let it sit. Four weeks. In four weeks time, we'll let you know how this is when we taste test it. Otherwise, what we have here is what I mentioned when we were over looking at those empty shelves. Lamb broth, summer's best soup, chili meat. These are all things that I had already canned enough for January, but I don't can enough for a year. I would have to can so many jars of that. So we just replenish as we need. And there we go. We're good to go. So one thing I will say is I don't think I need to make any more ketchup this year because we already made another seven jars and we have like 30 jars on the shelf. So remind me when that season comes not to make ketchup. But I hope you enjoyed the before and the after tour of the uh, pantry and stay tuned as we go through February. We're going to be canning a whole bunch more stuff, getting more stuff out of the freezers. And I'm also going to treat you to a few of my older videos where Chris and I, we harvested hard in the garden and we want to show you just how we manage to create all this food from what we grow here on the homestead. So stay tuned for some of those coming up because I think they're quite fun to see the transition from garden to the pantry. Anyways, hope you enjoyed and we shall talk again soon.